I'm going to start sort of with a, just a, a little biographical question. How did you find the stage? How did you get to the stage? We were brought to America in 62, and my father was an English teacher at Choate School. So it was a very large campus that we were able to p uh, play in. And I couldn't be understood by other children, or by adults certainly, till about age six. My father would take me to speech things. In what way was that? Why? I think I just didn't put the consonants. To, they didn't really know what it was. It was a strange one. I didn't put the consonants in the right place. I didn't form words correctly. And I spoke very rapidly about it. But my mother says that she remembers hearing me outside the window saying to boys, now you play this, you play that, and arranging little plays. So, and I do remember that, play acting as a pastime, fantasy uh, games and worlds. That, that I remember acting out the death of Robert Kennedy for days with a little cart, dragging it all around, and acting out television programs that we would see. When you were acting out, uh, could you speak better? Yes, I think so. Singing stops stuttering. You know, that's that's what I've heard, and it may be me projecting that back onto it. But I, I feel like I, I am, um, I learned to speak by, by p placing myself in stories and situations. One of the things that sort of is, I hate to use the word, but it's the only word that I can think of. Awesome about your attack on these roles is how deep you are taken over and, and take us into the worlds of these wild, like uh, into uh, uh, Johnny Rooster Byron here in, in Jerusalem. All right, do you want to know what happens? Do you want to know the actual truth? I, I was minding my own business, settling in, spliff, antiques roadshow, when, <laughs> when, when suddenly there's a knock on the door. So I gets up, I answers it, and standing just outside here is all seven birds off of the pussycat dolls. A couple of of my acquaintances have come reeling out of that performance. And what unsettles them is the misrule, is the wildness, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. is the danger of it. Yeah, that, yeah, and, you yeah. know, and actually being with this fierce spirit and being the, the unacceptable made irresistible. Can you aim a performance at, 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 can you sort of, sort of know, obviously, if it's yeah, subconscious? Yeah, if you aim at the can't. present. I think if you aim really, really at the present, if you avoid intellectual forms, I have nothing against the intellect, but you, you, you've got to aim at that. Emotional you, core. Well, it's emotional. It, 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 it's emotional, it's intellectual. It's something that's a gift, something that's, uh, that there's a poetic, you, you know, combination of the, these other elements. You need to, you, you'll, you'll find it only in the present connection between people, present. in the space between, and, and really by letting the audience be part of it. What surprises you most about Johnny Rooster Byron when you play him? I mean, what, what, what surprises you? You know the script well, but are you surprised by anything in the character as you continually reinvent him so brilliantly night after night? What surprise? Well, he's very, the energy he has, the defiance. I mean, when I start to, when my character in the play starts to whimper and go, oh, I'm feeling a bit tired, he won't have any of that. Come on, he says, you've got a job to do. You're serving me now. Yeah. He's very, very um, defiant. I wish I had his sense of wit, his sense of uh, humor. Don't we all? When I finish the play, I have to take a good five or ten minutes to, um, to calm down. The, the other, on, last, on Wednesday night, actually, I developed a new plan because I suddenly realized he's a really martial character. Yes. Because I was but having all these Venusian kind of upswellings and fantasies in my life, and I thought, what's going on here? And then I realized he's, he's, uh, he's, he's not just Dionysian, he's martial. I, I bet it's hard to sleep at night with her in the room right next door. Is she in your dreams, boy? Is she in your dreams? your fucking mouth! You could be wrong! If you're made right, you oh, fucking oh, yeah. hell! Damn I'm standing right fucking here, man! And when the Celtic warriors came back from war, the women in the town, so this is what I've heard, they'd all bare their breasts and stand there with their breasts bare, and then they would put the warrior in a cold tub of water for three days where he would steam 
and that will bring them back to ground. So I've decided, I can't go where there are a lot of bare-breasted women, but I've decided to go to a spa every Wednesday night after the double show day and put myself in it, a tub of water. Just to calm down. Yeah. yeah it, it beats a, a, a fifth of whiskey. It, it does, yeah. A fifth of whiskey, it just lights the fire again of, of, of Rooster Johnny Byron.